We're going to try and sell my X5 at auction. Yeah. It's the 46IS. Yeah. It needs, well, starting to make a little noise from the uh, yeah. timing chain guides. It's got to check engine light, suspension issues, accessory issues, power locks. Uh, yeah, leaking a little from the radiator. I, I, I did pay $7,500 for it. So What? Yeah, I know. So X5s, Even what? X5s, they, they, I guess the, you are the dumbest automotive channel on YouTube, aren't you? Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And a question I wrestle with frequently is whether I should get my dealer's license again. I did have a dealership years ago. I was terrible at it and failed in the business, went to do something else and then started doing YouTube videos. And well, here I am today, but now I could use a dealer's license for a number of reasons, not just to buy and sell cars and make money. Honestly, the amount that I pay in registration and taxes with my Hoopty fleet with purchasing, keep in mind sales tax like seven, eight percent. I spend over a hundred thousand dollars a year just on that. Yeah, I know it's out of control and it's more than I ever made as a car dealer any year that I was working in the car business. But if I got my dealer's license, that would wipe it out all in one swoop because I could drive around on dealer plates. If I don't keep cars for very long, there's no reason for me to tag and register and do all that kind of stuff. But if you get a dealer's license, you have to have obviously a commercial space. You can't do it out of your house, which means you have to maintain business hours. So you'd have to hire an employee and different insurance and all that stuff. It adds up to the point where that hundred thousand dollars I'm spending a year. Well, it gets eaten up by a commercial space I'm renting or buying employees, uh, liability taxes, all that stuff. So I haven't done it yet, but every time I go to the tag office and write that check, it is something that I certainly think about. And actually now I have an opportunity to tiptoe back into the car business because urination Bob is actually in Atlanta, Georgia filming Benwicky. He's been a car dealer, a car part seller, junkyarder for 30 years now. So a lot of great stories, but since he's gone, he needs somebody to go around and check all the wholesale sources, something that I used to do. I even introduced him to a few of these and uh, bid on the cars. But the situation here with car sales is so, so bad right now that really it's not very much fun. When it comes to inventory, dealers are keeping just about anything that they can make money on that won't leave their customers stranded. And only the worst of the worst is getting kicked off to wholesale. Auctions are a minefield and these dealer wholesale bidding where you actually go to the dealership itself and bid on their wholesale cars. Well, the pickings are very, very slim and you really have to figure out why something was traded in because usually people aren't upgrading because they want to given how scarce inventory is and how high prices are. So people for the most part are upgrading because they absolutely have to and the cars they're trading in reflect that. In addition to bidding cars, there's another car that I absolutely cannot sell, which is another reason why I probably shouldn't be a car dealer again. And that's the 2003 BMW X5 that I bought for the BMW Dream Team. It's the 46 IS with only 113,000 miles, but I got had in that car pretty good because the seller said it wasn't a project and well, it needs the timing chain guides. It needs suspension. It, it needs all of the mechanical stuff that X5s need and it's mechanically totaled basically, but it's all pretty obvious when you look at the car, but I'm going to kick that over to the dealer wholesale auction and see what I can get $7,500 into it. So fingers crossed there, but first we're going to go bid cars. So let's go. All right. So I'm at the first new car store and I've got the list. It's only six cars and uh, well, here they are. Colorado fusion, Honda element, hello, Dolly, Dodge neon and a CRV element. That, that's a good one there. So this store is a little bit of a letdown in that they don't tell you how much it sold for just if you won or lost on your bid. So let's, uh, let's wander through and take a look here. Honda CRV, a 2011 with 212,000 miles. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, that's a noise. Yeah. Well, it's quiet now, but that cold start chatter, I thought these were timing belt cars, so that's a little weird. Probably going to pass on it just from that horrible noise on the cold start and 212,000 miles. So uh, next, the Dodge Neon, uh, rust slammed in the front. Oh, they definitely hit a curb in the ice storm here, so that's probably why they dumped it. Let's see how it runs. Oh, but the steering wheel matching the floor mats, that is something. Only 106,000 miles. Oh, okay. This, this is definitely going to be another, another pass. Honda Accord is listed as a bad alternator with 126,000 miles. Not buying any projects for Bob really, but uh, 
Yeah, it's not all that nice either. So probably going to pass 110,000 miles on the Chevy Colorado, probably the five cylinder. We used to sell these when they were new. Ooh, that is a really, really bad paint job, but it does appear to be a rust free truck. Let's see what we got. Pace model roller window, Colorado. Actually seems to run pretty nice. No lights? Hey, we might got somebody a work truck here. Take it for a spin. Well, we have our first warning light for the battery, so this one may have a bad alternator as well. Probably don't want to drive this thing too far and get stranded, so let's just do a quick romp. It is a two-wheel drive. Seems to have good power. I mean, back when I was doing this before the world went nuts, this would have been a good, you know, $5,000 work truck for somebody. So, well, let's look it over a little closely and then scan and see uh, what this thing's worth nowadays. Yeah, there's that five cylinder. It actually looks pretty decent. We have some coolant. We have some oil. Underneath. It's a little oily, but not bad. Normal 100,000 mile car. So now they're saying that that $5,000 number is basically wholesale on this thing, $4,500 with a retail range of $4,700 to $11,750. Beautiful. Uh, I think with this one, Bob's not really gonna like it. Uh, quite a hoopty, so, well, maybe we can just steal it. I'm gonna put down a thousand bucks. You can't just put a thousand bucks, so it's gonna be $1,000. $69. Next to it, we have a Grand Cherokee with 149,000 miles that, uh, oh God. Oh, <laughs> smell. Oh, oh, oh God. How? How do you do this to your car? Oh, that, is that dog food? Oh, oh. Oh, 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 uh, no. All right, now the Honda. These are hot properties, missing a trim piece here, but alloy wheels, so dang cool. They've got one of the seats folded up, you know, safari style, like an old Land Rover, and then the rubber completely flat seating. These are great campers. These are great everything. And they've gone way up in value since they quit making them, of course. This one looks really cool. No lights other than the tire pressure monitor system, which is pretty normal. The sensors go bad. Air conditioning. Blowing cold. It's not clean, but it's not, not like that Jeep, so good for that. This might be a car. Here's the bell of the ball here. A <laughs> good little jump to test things there. A little cluck on the suspension, but not bad. Wheel bearings sound all right. Yes, I'll buckle my seatbelt. Stop straight. I think we have something here. So this one's good. It's actually something Bob wants. So I called him because I thought, well, looking at the phone, maybe around four grand, something like that. Uh, uh, but Bob's saying if I want something, you got to really go over. So Bob, what do you want to do on this yeah. lovely CRV? Yeah, yeah, right. Sometimes you gotta you gotta you gotta step up, and uh, especially tax season around the corner or whatever. But uh, yeah, MMR I think was around four grand. On is that right? Yeah. Yep. That's right. I would say we we'll probably have to, to get up there pretty swing pretty hard. I'd say probably around uh, 51, 51, 51. <laughs> <laughs> Five grand on a hundred eighty thousand mile Honda. Oh, that's the world we live in. It's right? eleven years old. Okay. All right. You sure? <laughs> yeah, and you know what's funny is uh, there's a good chance I might not even get it, Tyler. And that's, that's swinging for the fence on that one. Well, I mean, this is basically the only one here that's even remotely worth buying, but there's still one other place to go, so I'll let you know if there's any nice prospects. How's yeah, how's how's Vinwicky? Are you prepping? Uh, yeah, yeah, going through my uh, notes and uh, trying to put together the stories and not uh, come up looking like a complete buffoon. All right, well, good luck. Don't, don't bury me. Uh, did you look underneath for rust, Tyler? I, I, I did. I did. Unlike you, I do I do that. Yes. All right. <laughs> oh, See you, Bob. Here we go. Bye. Well, I'm at the next stop, and this list is way less promising here. Most of them, 200,000 miles, are pushing it. 
and then nothing too exciting. So this might be kind of a dud. Let's go take a look. The first one is this 2006 GMC Sierra. Oh, clean cut there. So I'm guessing a catalytic converter theft. That's falling off. Oh, and we got rust. Standard GMT 800 rust. Darn it. Okay. Well. Yeah, definitely no muffler on it. Belongs in Newton, actually. But probably too much of a project. 200,000 miles, cracked windshield. So that's no caravan with a big din in it. That's not a urination bob special. Oh, Honda Civic. Ruined front bumper. Bad window titting. Another just gross interior. Electrical box just hanging there, so that's out. Nissan Versa could be the nicest Nissan Versa in the world, and it's definitely not. But it was, even if it was the nicest one, we'd still be out. Pure dry. Oh my god, how do you get it on both sides? And disgusting on the inside, 190,000 miles, so that one's used up. The Jeep Grand Cherokee, 220,000 miles. So, yeah, that's out. Journey, Equinox, no. Corolla. Ooh. Well, we have something here, a Corolla XRS. On the sheet, it just says a 2009 Corolla with 194,000 miles, but we have an XRS with a stick. I'm getting excited about a Corolla because well, that's it. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Cracked windshield. No lights, though. And a stick shift. Let's take it for a ride. All right, you go, XRS. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hitting it. So this one's pretty good. Air works. Let's see, windows. Windows are working. Sunroof. Sunroof is doing the job. Pretty clean interior, actually. We'll send the VIN over to the Bob and see what he thinks, but probably, I don't know, $4,000 bid, six to $7,000 retail after some conditioning. It needs brake rotors for sure. Windshield, I'll do one other quick walk around because I didn't really look at it that closely. Just got excited because it had a stick. Oh, it missed the wheels. And the front balance. It's already off for her next uh, victim. So after seeing the wheels, which are oxidized so badly, which is funny because it's nice underneath, it's just probably defective wheels. I thought, well, maybe you back it off to like three grand so you can get Fast and Furious wheels. Bob said, no, 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 bid uh, $4,200. I put down $4,269, so we'll see if we get it. But we've hit two major franchise car dealers, new car dealers, and this in two weeks, because we had a storm, these are the only trades that they are offering for wholesale, a total of like 14 cars and you saw them i mean really almost not worth buying but uh two of them actually aren't awful so we'll see what we get but one thing's for sure i'm glad i'm not doing this anymore because it's not fun all right i have the results right here but before we look into whether i spent urination bob's money on some real japanese prizes and bit enough let's talk Hoovy's garage merch which is linked below t-shirts here classic Hoovy's garage blue along with a lot of cool new styles including the Countach shirt which is a popular one but also Hoovy's garage stickers you can see right here it's covering up holes on my Porsche so you can fix your hooptiness in your car by putting a sticker over it or on your laptop or something you use every day and if you tweet me at Hoovy's garage I will share it in the video like I am right now Matthew Ruppert uh, put it on his Pathfinder it appears or maybe that's an infinity. Looks really good on his window, so thank you for that. And also, a European fan, Brian, put it on his Turan. Look at that. I can't even tell what country that is, but thank you so much for putting a sticker on your weird Volkswagen that I don't know what it is. But let's get to the results here. So like I said, the first door is a closed bid. They don't tell you how much the car sold for, just if you want or not. And we did win the Honda Element for $5,000, which sounds like a lot, but in this market and tax returns coming, that makes sense. But the other dealership tells you how much everything sold for, and we can go down the line here. That wrecked Jeep Grand Cherokee, $1,788 it was totaled. The Nissan Versa, another junker, $1,400. 
I was expecting crap. The 2011 Equinox is thirty thousand one hundred fifty-nine dollars. Another car that's absolute junk. That GMC Sierra with the rust and over two hundred thousand miles, a four point eight liter two-wheel drive, five thousand two hundred thirty-five dollars. That's wholesale. Somebody's going to try and sell that for a profit. I don't see how. The ruined, ruined Honda Civic, seventeen hundred ninety-nine dollars. What? The Dodge Journey. Nobody wants those. Four thousand three hundred fifty dollars. And the 2012 Caravan that was wrecked. $5,250. But we were also the high bidder on the Corolla at $4,269. So the two cars that I seriously bid it on, I won, which is a little scary because now Bob gets to see them and decide if I did a good job or not. But first, he's going to help me take this X5 to the auction and hopefully sell it. So please. Well, there's old Hollywood there. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Uh, not much. Love the Alpha. Uh, yeah, first one I've had. I've always had a uh, kind of a hankering for one of these things. So, how do you like the YouTuber life? Uh, I'm not. A, I'm not a YouTuber. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't want to be a car dealer anymore. This isn't any fun. So, yeah. we're gonna continue with this. Oh, we're gonna try and sell my X5 at yeah. auction. It's the 46 yeah. IS. It needs well, starting to make a little noise from the. Uh, Timing chain guides. It's got check engine light, suspension issues, accessory issues, power locks. Uh, yeah, leaking a little from the radiator. Yeah. All these things that people can easily see. Right, right. And, and this is not like I'm I'm doing something. I'm pulling something over on anybody. You can easily see all of these issues, and you can test drive it at the auction. Yep. It's not like the Subaru Baja where the rust. It's not going to kill somebody. It's just right, all mechanical right. stuff. So yeah. this is what you see at face value. I I, I did pay seventy five hundred dollars for it. So what? Yeah, I know. So X five what? X fives they they. I guess the, you are kinda, the dumbest automotive channel on YouTube, aren't you? People do kind of know at the auctions that X fives are landmine. So maybe we'll be another example of how crazy prices are. Or maybe, maybe or I'll be, it could be another example of uh, how bad BMWs are. Yeah. So we'll drop this off. Can All I? Right, can I drive that? Uh, you got it. I haven't driven one of these four cylinder ones. Pretty nice. I mean, you know, not worth what they were new, but certainly a good value used. And Bob got this actually at auction out here in Kansas because nobody knows what the heck these things are. So, anyway, it seems like a nice car. There she goes. Fingers crossed. Big money, big money, big money. I can't get rid of this thing. Even though the market's nuts, it's not hot on BMW X5s. So I guess every single dealer knows by now, right? Uh, X5s at the at the auctions are just an absolute, you know, do not pass. So I didn't even get a bid. They went even down to $2,000 and nobody would put their hand up, which is, I mean, that's kind of silly at this point because this is a 4.6 IS. It's not like ruined, wrecked or anything. It's all mechanical issues that somebody, if they wanted to go through this thing, they could have a really cool car. Guilty by association. $3,500 is all I want. It's a $5,000 loss that I'm willing to take on this thing. You have to do timing chain guides, you have to do suspension, but it's a solid 113,000 mile car. I guess if you want to email me at whovysgaragebiz at gmail.com unless Bob wants it right now. No, I'll pass. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you're smiling because you had a good day. You sold one of my ex Hoovy cars. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess you call it a good day. It's uh, that old uh, 88 uh, Fleetwood. The purple brougham. The yeah. purple nurple is gone no, to a no, new No, no, no. It's the Merlot Broham. Ah. <laughs> yes. Well, you made a few grand. I made a couple bucks, so it's all good. But I'm curious how you thought I did on the element. Because you were out of town. You're yes. doing the Vin Wiki thing. Yes, yes. I was doing the car dealer thing. Yes, so. Yes. Well, let's go take a look. Sure. All right. Honda Element, it drives really nice, doesn't it? Yeah, until it got here. What do you mean? <laughs> well, uh, I had a little, uh, I think it must have had a little Hoovy DNA left stuck on the uh, ignition or whatever. So uh, we parked it here and then we went to pull it in the first night and the ignition switch locked up. <laughs> so the key went bad. Yeah, well, the tumbler went bad, but it's fairly common. It's got miles on it. There's no way for me to know about that, but okay. No, I know, yeah, no, it's just chance and luck. Would you have paid five grand for well, it? Let me look at it. I okay. haven't, even, I haven't oh. even looked at it. We All right. haven't even been able to pull it in. I'll pop this back in for oh, you. Oh, here. Oh, there we go. This that's piece here, common. yeah, that's yeah. it flew off. Yeah, common that and Mini Coopers. But it has but, nice uh, tires. The suspension was clunking. I told you about that. Are you trying to sell me this car? Are you trying? To I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, a light detail. Oh, I know. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look here. All right. Well, you know, I'm an interior snob, yeah. and a uh, little, little, uh, little kind of below, you know, kind of my standards. But it was uh, one owner, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. No accidents. So. 
you know, and these are utilitarian cars, so it's not like that's gonna really like, you know, it's not like it's a BMW or Mercedes or something. It'll detail out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, this will clean up a, a nice. This, this will work for sure. Runs good. I can't. I've never even heard it run because uh, it, it, it drives. It drives fine. It does. Well, good. Well. So you would have left a bit on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think we're good. It's a popular vehicle, and they're known for being reliable. And mm -hmm. you know, with what people are doing right now, doing a lot of more adventure type of stuff, I think it's a good buy. Yeah. All right. So Corolla is an yeah. oddball. It's yeah. actually quite rare because I went and looked afterwards. Right. There's like one for sale with a stick in the entire country of these XRSs. Yeah. And I was missing this front lower piece. I told yeah. you about that. Right. It's yeah. That's easy enough though. Actually, uh, uh, checked as a dealer. They were kind of expensive, like 178 bucks a piece. Mm. But there was a pair on eBay for like 70 bucks. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then you got to have that because it's part of the car. But I didn't even know it existed either uh, when you told me about it. Yeah. I told you about the wheels. Yeah. You told me about the wheels, but you know, little little headlight reconditioning. Um, the one thing you know you probably you didn't really notice that I'm gonna notice is the hail damage. What? You know, yeah, there's hail. I mean, I'm, I'm cursed oh, with an eagle it's, eye. It's the afternoon twilight. I, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, considering the age of the car and stuff, that's not gonna really be a killer for the car. But I kind of dig this car actually. I'm mm -hmm. really glad we got it. When you were telling me about it, you know, I decided to kind of step up and try to get it bought because I like these unusual oddball sticks. Well, and still the interior a, of this is nice. Like a 200,000 mile 15 year old Camry would yeah. still sell for like three, thirty, five hundred bucks. So this is yeah, no, cool. this is cool. XRS and, manual with yes. the like a Camry motor in it or a Scion TC basically with right. four doors. So it's it's cool. It's, it's the old pony car um, trick of the, of the it's the Japanese version of a pony car. Take your bigger motor and put it in your smallest car. So you let me fill in again if you go to VinWiki for an extra round yes, of stories? Yes, yes. And I can't, you never look, to, never look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, if you check out VinWiki now, Bob's first video should be up. I think Friday is the release it, day? Today, yeah, today should be Friday when yeah, I release I this. I so. look like too much of an idiot. <laughs> well, to it works good. for YouTube, actually. Looking dumb okay, really, okay. really works. Just ask these people. Thank you so much for watching.